Peter said, my name is Ian Parkinson. I'm CEO of Halcones Precious Metals. Uh, a little bit about the backstory of Halcones. Um, Halcones is associated with a, a group of entrepreneurial stories. Um, we share a back office with Emerita Resources, so you see me maybe wearing multiple hats during this, present, or during this conference. Um, uh, lithium Ionic is another name that's come out of our stable. Uh, Halcones is, is a newer company. Uh, we've been public for about uh, 12 months. Uh, we're about 150 million shares outstanding basic, 200 million uh, fully diluted. Any given day, we're a 12 to 13 million dollar market cap. Uh, we did a, a, a modest size raise over the summer months. We raised three million bucks uh, to get back to work at our uh, Karacha Pampa project. Um, backstory about Halcones, um, it means Falcon in Spanish. A lot of the team behind the scenes are the old Falcon Bridge Exploration team from South America. Uh, we basically, over the last couple of years, have managed to put the band back together. So, um, how do I? Yeah. So, I will probably wave my arms. So, uh, seek Dave Harbor. So, where we're operating, uh, where we're exploring, we're in the world class Miracunga belt. Um, I think the Miracunga belt needs no introduction. Uh, you have well over 100 million ounces in the general vicinity. Uh, we're in the northern portion of that, an area that's dominated more by epithermal gold deposits, uh, specifically a high sulfidation model is what we're chasing. Uh, down towards the south, you've got uh, you know, some, some obviously world-class deposits, Sarah Casale, et cetera, and then below that or south of that, you've got uh, the Vicuna Belt where uh, Lundin's making a lot of noise with, with a lot of their discoveries. So we are effectively hunting for elephants in elephant country. Uh, our land package is about 3,000 hectares. We've only been working it for about 12 months. Uh, we're on our, uh, I call it two and a half drill programs into it so far, um, and, and stay tuned. So Crotchapampa, um, located very close to the mining center of uh, Copia Po, uh, road access. One of the things that sets us apart is we have a trans-Indian highway that basically intersects our property on the eastern side of it. So we can drive to and from Copia Po in a matter of a couple of hours. Uh, modest elevation by Andean standards, 26 to 2700 meter elevation. We can work the property 12 months of the year. Uh, we're, we're choosing not to, it cost us a little bit more money to put in a permanent camp. So for the time being, it's really a six month drill campaign. Uh, but if we do make a material discovery, we do have the flexibility of operating uh, 12 months of the year. Um, we have four, prop, uh, four targets on the property package, I'll get into those uh, shortly. And again, we had a, a small comprehensive drill program early part of 2023 that led to some pretty decent results that we're following up currently. So uh, the Karachi Pampa project and most of the deposits, material deposits in this area are associated with volcanic domes. Uh, we have four identified volcanic domes on the property package. Um, we've got four targets. We're really only focused on two of the targets today, uh, namely the northwest target and the central target. Uh, they're associated with a structural corridor that comes from uh, uh, operating mines up to the northwest. Uh, to the south, uh, west of us, we've got Kinross's uh, La Coipa. So we, again, we are surrounded by multi-million ounce deposits. This, this area has not seen a lot of modern exploration because there's a thin layer of alluvial cover. So I don't want to make fun of geologists because I am one, but geologists like to mine out of a truck, or sorry, a uh, map out of a truck. This takes a bit more work. So we haven't, we, we've got a lot, of, a lot of cover, not a lot of outcrop. Uh, so it's been a little bit, I think, ignored. Um, we've used some more modern techniques to uh, zero in on our targets. Uh, and, and we've had decent success so far. Um, so like I said, we've got the central target, the northwest, which are highlighted in green on the map. That's what we're currently drilling. We've got two other, uh, two other targets that we'd like to get to. Obviously, it'll be cash dependent, El Indio and, and uh, Falda. Great uh, surface geochem in those areas, but again, in a competition for capital internally, uh, northwest and central have been our focus. So again, I've, I've kind of gone through most of this already. Um, so it's a high sulfidation epithermal target as we understand it today. Uh, predominantly gold so far, but it is gold and silver mineralization. Uh, Nueva Esperanza is probably the most analogous uh, adjacent to our deposit or to our, to our target. Great all year uh, infrastructure. Um, to the north is Solaris Norte, which is just going into production. That's a gold fields uh, asset. And like I said, the long lived uh, La Coipa is just to the south west of us in well over 10 million ounces if you add everything together at La Coipa with a long, a long operating history. So going back to what we did earlier in the year, um, we only drilled, uh, only managed to drill seven holes. 
um, but three of the holes return decent, decent mineralization, uh, well north of a gram. Uh, highlight from that, that drilling was our hole 12, which is 2.75 grams over 10 meters. These are, these are oxide um, uh, hits so far, very near surface. So again, as I describe it, we've got a lot of smoke, uh, definitely worthwhile getting back into the field uh, as, as we're doing uh, currently. Only 1,500 meters drilled during that period. We're, we're in the middle of a similar sized uh, drill program as we speak. Um, so highlights from that uh, program, there's really two holes. There's hole eight, which is on the central target. Uh, we are drilling uh, on, on sec same section as we speak, testing this target at a little bit more depth. Uh, again, 11 meters of, of a little bit over a gram uh, with, uh, with, with a decent silver kicker. Um, we're following up, drilling these holes, uh, same section, but doubling the depth. Our previous drilling, and I'll get into the reasons why shortly, we only targeted to about 150 meters. Uh, our current drilling is targeting uh, down to about 300 meters. Uh, so anomaly that we found on the, our northwest target, again similar size or similar scale uh, drill hole, uh, but we found some, co um, some copper, anomalous copper at the bottom of this hole, which caused us uh, a bit of a rethink over the, our summer, the Andean winter, we had time to think about what this copper could mean. Um, unfortunately for us, um, we'd already stopped the hole and moved the drill by the time we realized there was a half a percent copper over, over two meters. Uh, but it led to a, a different interpretation conceptually of what, we're, what we have here from a, a deposit model. Um, during during the, our summer, we also had uh, teams in the field uh, doing extensive colluvial sampling. Uh, so we've got a, a, what we think is a, a whopping geochem anomaly that wouldn't you know what happens to be two, between two previously drilled drill holes. Um, background geochem in this area should be in the 35 to 50 ppm. Uh, we've got a whopping 1400 ppm anomaly uh, that obviously we need to drill test. Um, this is all new information. Again, there hasn't been a lot of grassroots prospecting in this area, so it's an evolving, evolving story as we move forward. Um, so to kind of think of what we may have, and this again, this is all conceptual. So um, over the course of the summer, we, we did some, some, some detailed analysis of the drill core and tried to figure out where it may fit with existing geologic models in the area. So the backdrop of this, and it's very cartoony, I get that, but you need to have a concept before you go exploring. This is really a backdrop of La Coipa. So where would our drill hole 12 fit within the La Coipa model? Well, we've got the dacite, we've got the silicification, we've got these structurally controlled vents, and we've got covalite at the bottom of the hole. Well, through a lot of the academic papers we were able to research and, and, and review, covalite is mentioned time and time again throughout the literature associated with high sulfidation epithermal deposits in this area. It often forms a bit of a veneer or a blanket around some of the target buggy silica, more, court, uh, more gold dominant mineralization. So that gave us a hint. Also hole seven, uh, which was drilled earlier in the campaign, ex the, lots of silica flooding, which is what you want to see. Unfortunately, hole seven didn't have any mineralization in it, but again, the silica and the silica flooding is, is indicative of this type of deposit. So it's hopefully telling us that we might be in the right, the right area to make a, a, a decent discovery. We also did a bunch of thin suction work. We initially thought this copper mineralization was chalcosite. Turns out it, it, it's hydrothermal covalite, uh, which tells us we're in the right temperature environment for high sulfidation epithermal deposit. Again, it's mentioned throughout the literature in these types of deposits. Um, really cheap work to do, uh, informs geology nerds like myself, doesn't generate a lot of you know, fancy press releases, but it was very, very helpful for us to better understand where we could be positioned within a theoretical deposit. So that was, that was key for us in the understanding of where we are. And again, some additional thin section work was the alteration package and the alteration minerals associated with this uh, anomaly that we're drilling off. So we think we're in the right area, and that's helping inform the ongoing drill program uh, that we're doing today. Uh, looking at our central target, again, where could our uh, hole eight line up within a theoretic or, or, or a La Coipa lookalike? Led us to believe simply we didn't drill deep enough. So going back to our previous drill holes, we're targeting 150 meters. Uh, we thought we were closer to a system. It turns out we probably need to double that depth. So we are targeting the central target uh, at a 350 meter depth. The drill is actually on this section uh, today. 
Uh, we've also done uh, during the summer months uh, or the downtime, we were able to do a, a, a bit more IP, IP work. Uh, lo and behold, we've got uh, resistivity anomalies that coincide with the geochem anomalies. We are hoping, again, it's all treasury dependent, as probably every other story in this conference is talking about, when we have more money, we're going to fly, fly more and more IP lines uh, across the 3,000 hectare, 3, hectares that we have, and also to expand the, uh, the colluvial work at the same time. Um, so uh, Mina del Indio, this is one of the other projects that we realistically can't get to based on, on our current treasury and current workload, uh, but some great, some great grab samples that we've been able to get from, from existing outcrop. Again, this area is poorly served by outcrop, but, but anomalous gold, anomalous, uh, anomalous silver, uh, an area that we'd, we'd like to get to, but this is realistically going to be a, you know, uh, something we get to maybe 12 months from now after we've uh, appropriately tested Central and, and Northwest. Uh, the Fall to East target, again, this is one of the other two. Um, some, some past operations, small scale, um, you know, targeting some, some, some high-grade mineralization. We've done some channel sampling and sampling of the back that they've left behind, three, four grams per ton over, over decent width. So, again, something that's worth following up when, if and when we have the time to do so. So ongoing, what we're doing right now is following up on the success of the central zone and uh, the northwest. And we think we've made initial discoveries there, but we really only have one pierce point uh, at this point in time. So we're following up on hole 12 and hole 8, uh, drilling deeper, and trying to understand if this model that we've got conceptually fits. We hit the covalite at the bottom of hole 12. We've now drilling that uh, the, the, uh, hole 15 is, is targeting that same area, but to twice the depth. Um, fingers crossed, the assays are, are effectively in the lab right now. They're starting to trickle in as we speak, so hopefully we'll be generating some, some positive news between now and the end of the year. So our work schedule, uh, this is what we've done and kind of take us to the end of the year. Uh, like I said, we did some IEP work in September, got everything ready to properly inform the drill program, um, did all the petrographic work and the geochem work, uh, and then we remobilized the camp. Uh, drill's been turning for a couple of weeks now. Uh, as we were, we were, the last presenter, presenter was talking about uh, assay turnaround, we are here, you know, we're, we're dealing with the same situation. It's you know, four to five weeks to get assays back from the lab. Um, I, I throw nickels around like they're manhole covers, so I'm not really uh, willing to pay to get assays rushed back because in this part of the world they charge us three times the cost to uh, get assays rushed. So hopefully we'll get some assays back in the next week as, and, and those will be trickling in uh, towards the end of the year. Now that's it. That's that's all coming.